Okay, in this video I'm going to demonstrate the latest update to test of full self driving, this version 13.2.9. I remembered to put on screen this time, so thank you very much, Chris. Good job. <laughs> and also, it's auto park feature. Uh, so, let's um, do the easy bit first, shall we? This will park in both a parallel and a 90 degree sort of thing. As you can see, it's offering up many different spots that I can park in. So I want to park in that one there, say. And uh, it's reasonably competent. I find though that it doesn't necessarily square it up very well. Uh, other cars that do, do this AI version where it doesn't need one car next to the other and it actually uh, can work out you know, what it needs to do. Yeah. That is not good. The front end of the car is out to the corner there and my back end's out to the corner there. So, mm, not the best. Let's uh, go try another one just to make sure it wasn't you know, just maybe the sun, the wind, the moon. Who knows? Who knows? All right. Let's go over here where there's nothing around me. Give it, give it the best opportunity it can to actually have a great little parking experience. All right, we'll go to that one. I'll start that. Just monitoring the situation around me. I mean, the resolution on the camera is great. I can see quite clearly what it's doing. Maybe an unnecessary correction there. Maybe not. If there were cars parked either side, that would have made sense. Um, and that's a bit better, more square. Great. Um, so I don't know. Has it gone backwards? Is it worse than it used to be? I'm not very sure, I'm not very sure at all, but I just feel that right now uh, the BMW Auto Park system is better. And weirdly, uh, I guess for hardware reasons, in the hardware for cars, you can't do remote summon yet. Um, and you can do it in the old versions, but they don't have full self-driving at all, supervised, full self-driving supervised. Anyway, so... Uh, when I last tested uh, full self-driving, I felt that um, confidence in it and its ability to drive like a normal driver, and that's a compliment by the way, <laughs> is, was, was and is good, very good. Um, I described it then and I still do now as a very competent, very good L-Pay LPA driver. Um, but I feel this has gone backwards a bit and I like to call this a grandma version because it's slow to get to speed, it doesn't get the speed limit, it tends to be under the speed limit, and um, I don't know, it, I mean, look, don't get me wrong, has it made questionable decisions? Not really, no. Are you a perfect driver? No. Is this car a perfect driver? No. So, <laughs> Tom, if you're that person about to comment on this, you're not going to get it because it's not perfect, please, the world is not perfect. We all live in this imperfect world of ours. So. I think for daily driving, you'll know um, its limitations and you'll work around them. Um, so let's engage it. And that's the first little tip, by the way. It's easier and better. Um, let the car do the navigation stuff, right? Like, you know, tell it where you want to go. And then drive a little bit, then engage it. It just, it just works better, it really does. And um, that camera up there is monitoring me and I've noticed it appears to be a bit more vicious. So if I hold my hands like this, it will nag me very soon and say, hey, uh, I'm using the camera and you need to have your hands ready to go. Uh, it's not driving right now, but it will do it. It will do it. The next reason I call this a grandma version, by the way, is because it keeps too much of a dis distance between yourself and the car in front of you. And in Melbourne, we're notorious for not letting people in. <laughs> and we do not leave enough space um, for cars to do that. And um, classic example, some cars were occupying the intersection there. And um, 
holding up traffic. Well done, cars. Good job. All right, now we're away. Here we go. Okay, so I'll I'll cross my arms. And of course, I'm filming, so it's not going to do it now, is it? Bloody typical. <laughs> anyway, it's clever. So yeah, if you wear those mirror-type glasses, uh, if you think you can buy yourself some glasses with the fake eyes on them, no, no. It's, 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 it's cleverer than that, it really is. Um, and look, so far this is very easy for it, and that is in itself just remarkable. You think about it, we're driving in a car that's driving me. Um, and people who get in are just amazed, and I need to remind myself of that. And so the criticism I have in this video is for your benefit, so you know what it's like, and also in some way, Tesla, if they choose to watch it. And I think they will, because they let me in this car. I am in a privileged position to be able to get me a learner cars. I review a lot of electric cars. And um, feedback's important. So whenever you disengage from full self-driving, it will say, hey, you disengaged, what happened? And you can um, press the uh, microphone button and submit a bug report, uh, and then Tesla will take that on board and improve it over time. So I would highly recommend that um, do that. Please do do that. This traffic is terrible. Is this quite normal? I tell you, Melbourne traffic is really bad. All right. Now, an observation I'm seeing here, and I've seen it many a time in this version, is it's either too much left or too much right, generally left, by the way, of the lane. Um, I have got a good metre from that left side and I'm close to the edge on this side. And what I think it is doing, it actually is following what the car in front is doing. So if the car in front tends to be a bit more on the right of the lane, it will do the same and vice versa. Um, autopilot in this and most other Teslas is very good at centering. And the moment you engage autopilot, by the way, if you're not used to being in the true center of a lane, the moment you do it, the car will pull it over and you'll be in the center lane and you feel like you're sitting in a very different position to what you're used to. Um, so <laughs> that's a little fun, fun fact, right? But nonetheless, I would much rather this car be a bit closer to that left-hand side because, you know, in, a, in Melbourne, in Victoria, it's legal for motorbikes to filter through traffic like this up to 30 k's per hour. So I'd much rather keep a space over there for them than this current situation where they would have to you know, squeeze past it. And look at this, watch this. It just let that car in and it's gonna do the same here again. Like, that's, that's real world driving habit. And somehow they've programmed this. It's just amazing. All right, we're gonna go now, car. You gonna let me in? Yeah, 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 you go. Well, last one. I'm gonna have to tap it. I'm gonna tap it. And that's an expression I've used a lot this last week. I have to tap it. And um, if I could demonstrate this car getting up to speed, um, I will have to actually encourage it up to the actual speed limit. Uh, and you do that by tapping the accelerator. I don't know if you can see that gap there, but if you leave more than a car lamp, and that was, that's easily two or three car lamps, you'll be cut off at every moment. Yes, All right, here we go. Finally, getting some speed up. Okay. Now you notice, it's a 60k per hour zone. Here's a video demonstrating the very issue, whereby I'm driving for a full one minute in the right lane, nothing in front of me in a 60k per hour zone, and the car is not going up to the speed limit.
keeps reading the speed signs incorrectly. Thankfully it ignored that 40k per hour uh, speed advisory because I think it was up high. Here comes another one. I'm watching the speed limit now. 60, thank goodness. It actually uh, didn't change it, but I might uh, drives to work. It was picking up those signs and 30k per hour um, uh, side street um, speed signs quite a lot. And uh, I didn't, I couldn't understand why it was doing that. I really couldn't. Now the other thing here is that it's changing lanes way too late. It is doing it in under the last kilometer, if not the last five or six hundred meters, and uh, it's just not a good driving behavior. I think I've upset many drivers in this car because I try to let it do its own thing to learn what it's like and uh, I just feel that the lane changes should, should happen a lot sooner than they are. Yeah. Alright, here we go. So we want 60 k's per hour. There we go. So you see it's dropped beneath 60 k's per hour now, it's 57. Okay, there's stop traffic up ahead, so I guess it's slowing for that, but it's slowing way too soon. Way too soon. And yeah, look again, don't know if you can see this, but I'm in the right hand side of this lane. On the left hand side, there is a good 75 centimeters or so. Because why? Don't know. Comment below if you know why. This is also amazing. We're, we're going down a narrow road that's actually bi-directional. And if cars were coming towards us, you would have to pull in and negotiate with the car coming towards us. And I've always found this behavior to be appropriate and very much next to level, human, human level. Quite amazing. Um, so I've never been in this road in my life. And I've said it before and I'll say it again, this is what driving it should be like in the future. And it's actually reality now in that you could be monitoring and looking for issues where maybe you wouldn't have in the past. It's uh, just incredible what full self driving can do. Um, people who are kind of like, oh no, I'm afraid, I'm scared. Um, it feels pretty confident, just albeit cautious and slow. So we're coming to an unprotected left hand turn and we can go now. Bit of a delay there, but okay, fine. So yeah, let me know below if you have experienced the same issues. Uh, speaking to friends who have also got um, full self-driving supervised, um, both in the, um, the late model ones uh, before they changed over to the Highland sort of versions, um, they seem to be experiencing a better version than this one. Now, there is a bit of a theory out there, and I actually quite love this theory. There might be nuanced little secret versions uh, underneath. So when you're doing testing, what you do is you deploy, you know, to tens of thousands of vehicles. One version's got a little bit of tweaks going this way, a bit more cautious, say, a bit more grandma-like. And then other ones are getting a bit more, bit, bit more pushy. Previous version was definitely better than this. Um, and then they understand how many interventions happen from owners to then work out where they go next. This is a pretty good theory, maybe. If you know, comment below. <laughs> We'd like to hear from you. And whilst you're there, subscribe. Absolutely helps out the channel. If you want to see early access and behind the scenes, Kofi is a good place for that. And otherwise, right now, YouTube reckons one of these videos is something you might want to see. So yeah, follow these links and uh, check out those videos. And uh, thanks for watching. We really do appreciate it. And um, you know, I think this is a, a, a good indicator of what full self-driving is like and that it's uh, completely livable just you need to know its limitations and uh, you know again hopefully it should improve over time just this version didn't appear to improve mm, yeah, I don't think it did kind of went a bit backwards anyway version 14 anybody <laughs> version 14 okay all right take care